Right. There's a carb more deadly, more dangerous than actual sugar, okay, that you need to know about. And very unfortunately, you probably have been consuming this carb for a very long time without knowing it. And it's a little conflicting because it causes belly fat, diabetes, and gut inflammation, yet it's considered safe. How can that be? That doesn't make sense. This carbohydrate is not a sugar. It's not sweet, yet it behaves like sugar, not just behaves like sugar, but way worse than sugar on the glycemic index. So if we take a look at this little index, right, we have right here, table sugar, 65, right? And then we go up to 100. This is on the glycemic index. That's glucose, right? 100 is glucose, the same as white bread, you know, other type of refined carbohydrates. And the reason why glucose is 100 and table sugar is 65 is because table sugar has glucose and fructose. And fructose is lower on the glycemic index. So uh, it averages out to 65. But look at this, above glucose, 110 to 136. That's where this ingredient is. I want to see if you can guess what this is. Go ahead and comment down below. Okay, I'm going to give you some clues. It's in chips. It's in crackers. It's in bread, pasta, cereals, infant formulas, soups, pretty much all the dressings. It's in light beer. It's in energy drinks. It's in a lot of support products, especially if you're running long distance marathons. Uh, there's a certain carbohydrate that they give you to keep going. It's in a lot of the protein powders to help you supposedly build muscle mass. And these ingredients right here are very interesting because if you have less than five grams per serving size, you can make it zero carbohydrates. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Like, how can you have something that is like 500 milligrams in that area and have it be zero on the label? That is what's called a loophole that industry uses to put these carbohydrates in to make it seem like there's no sugar and no carbs. And so it's all about the serving size. If it's 0.5 grams, that's 500 milligrams. Like, how big is that? Well, think of a capsule of something. That's roughly about 500 milligrams. It's in artificial sweeteners. It's also in many sugar-free products, right? For diabetics, which is legally correct because it's not classified as a sugar, even though it behaves like a sugar, but it's a carbohydrate. So they can actually claim it's sugar-free. What a scam. So here you are trying to lose weight and getting off sugar, and then you're consuming this thing that's worse than sugar. This could be a barrier. Oh, the seasoning mixes. They put this ingredient in a lot of the seasoning mixes. And the purpose of this video, once I reveal what this is, is to force you to start reading the ingredients, right? So you can avoid this ingredient because it's in so many different things. It's in a lot of your supplements. And you know what its main purpose is? It's a filler. I mean, I think it'd be better to fill it with sawdust than this ingredient. Okay, it's also in condiments. It's in flavorings, even my nutritional products. I had to pay extra to make sure that it wasn't in our electrolyte powders. And I did a video on this and I compared different products and you can, there's a test, it's called a uh, starch test. Add a couple drops of iodine to it. And if there's a certain ingredient in there, okay, it'll turn dark purple, okay? And if there's not, it'll stay kind of translucent yellow, but it can be classified as zero sugars. Did you guess what it is yet? All right, this is what it is. Maltodextrin. There's other names for maltodextrin too, like dextrin, modified food starch, glucose syrup, corn syrup. So maltodextrin is a highly, highly processed ingredient, okay? They maybe start with GMO corn, and then they refine it, and then they add an acid to it, and it started out as a starch. And really a starch is a bunch of glucose molecules connected together. And so maltodextrin is a polysaccharide. Poly meaning many, saccharides meaning sugars. So it's many sugars connected together. So it's considered a starch. When they go through the process of adding acid, that's called hydrolysis. Basically, that's a process where they chop up this starch into tiny pieces it's not fully broken down into glucose molecules, but it's very um, refined and it's broken up partially. So they can still legally call it a starch, but this is a highly processed starch. It's not like a 
like a potato, something like that. It's it's more of an industrial, ultra process food, but I don't even want to call it food because it doesn't resemble food. And uh, it doesn't have all the vitamins and minerals like even other starches might have to protect you against all the oxidative damage that it's going to create. But when it goes in your body, it spikes your sugar more than actual sugar does, okay? And it creates a lot of gut inflammation, gas and bloating, and it alters the microbiome to the point where you have a less diverse good bacteria microbiome. Uh, there's also reports that it creates leaky gut, so it's not good for your digestive system. And sometimes it creates an over-fermentation, so basically you're going to get more gas, more bloating, but other than that, it's going to be totally fine. Well, not to mention the glyphosate, the herbicide that comes along with it, because when you're processing like corn or even like the wheat, you're not just going to have that carbohydrate, you're going to have other chemicals with it. Not to mention gluten, I didn't even talk about that. So the two loopholes that maltodextrin uses is one, uh, you can classify it as a zero carb, even though it could be 500 milligrams of material, which is crazy. And even though it acts like a sugar, actually worse than a sugar, they don't have to call it a sugar, they call it a carbohydrate. And people have this idea that, oh, carbohydrates are healthier than sugars, right? Well, not in this case. And if we take a look at all of the ultra-processed food ingredients, like all the junk food ingredients, my viewpoint is that this thing is the worst of all of those. I mean, if you can think of something that's worse than this, please comment down below. But if you look at the research on this, I mean, it's it's crazy and it's considered safe. Second loophole, okay? Gross. This is a way to bypass the FDA. So they don't have to go through all this process of getting approved. They can just basically claim that it's safe and submit the form and presto, it's safe because industry says it's safe. This is how they get a lot of toxic chemicals into the environment as well. They call it generally recognized as safe. So anytime you see that, that is not by the FDA. That is by industry. They're basically telling you it's safe. So the big problem is this maltodextrin is in so many different foods in the grocery store. Uh, you're going to have just have to start reading labels. And uh, like I said before, you know, watch out for the word maltodextrin, anything with maltodextrin, corn starch, food starch, glucose syrup, corn syrup. So if you're trying to lose weight or trying to be healthy, that is one ingredient that you want to stay away from. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.